G'day guys, and welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. As you are all well aware, I'm sure it is the business end of the footy season, and with that, along with finals, comes the AFL award season. As I'm sure you're aware, the 40-man squad for the All-Australian team was released a couple of days ago, and with it, they've released an online website where you can submit your own All-Australian 22. So I was planning to do a video on this anyway, but now that I can just use the screen recorder and use their website, I am very grateful, and I'm sure you're all happy to be spared my awful graphics that I try and put on through iMovie. Recently, I was a guest on the Ruck Rover AFL podcast and Christian and I went through our All Australian 22s. Um, and if you want to check out more detail about our selections, you can go check out that podcast. I highly recommend it. It's really good. But in this video, I'm going to take you through my 22 anyway. Of course, with finals just around the corner, I'm going to be making heaps of AFL content. Uh, if you haven't seen already, I just did a finals preview ranking the teams on how likely I think it is they're going win the premiership so go check that out if you haven't already i've also got an afl brownlow count video coming i've been keeping a brownlow count throughout the year and i'm going to try my best to present it in a video that's interesting to watch and uh you guys who'll see who i predict will win the brownlow medal in that video but for today let's just stick to the all australian team and i'm going to load it up on the screen for you um, so you can follow along at home. All right, so how it works on the screen is you can see all the positions uh, naturally and you just got to fill them in. And there is a list of players over here, as you can see. So that is, you can only choose the 40-man squad that they have picked. And I've had a, look, a little look through and there was a player that I wanted to have in my team that didn't even make the list, but we'll get down to that in due course. So let's just stick with the old tried and true format. I'm gonna go with the back line first, guys, and um, I'm gonna show you who I pick in my 22. So back pocket, I'm gonna go for a medium sort of defender type. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna choose my third tall defender and I'm gonna go Harris Andrews because his name just popped up as I was looking for it. So Harris Andrews is my uh, yeah third tall defender. He's one of the best intercept players in the game. He's just 22 years old, which is ridiculous. Um, I feel like he's the next McGovern. Some people say he's already as good, um, but either way, he certainly makes a team for me, but I'm gonna go with Dylan Grimes as my primary key back. I think he's been fantastic. In the absence of Alex Rance this year, he's really stood up. He's extremely versatile. He played really well, played really well against the Eagles the other day, so it's a bit of recency bias there, but nonetheless, I think he's a deserving um, winner of that uh, position. And surprise, surprise, we're going with my boy Jeremy McGovern as the center half back spot. Just so consistently good all year round um, and he's such a damaging asset for a defender. So now with three spots left, we're gonna go for some medium defensive types. And the first one that comes to mind is Tom Stewart. Absolute gun, miserly defender. Yeah, he's had a fantastic year. Hard to believe he was recruited out of the amateurs, I believe, a few years ago. Um, but he's a serious gun, like Grimes, can play on talls and smalls and is one of those real lock lockdown types that is also like pretty good um, with the ball as well. Now for the halfback flank, I have gone for a guy who has kind of bolted in my mind. Um, he has averaged like 29 disposals this year at 80% efficiency and that's Bashar Hooli. Arguably could have won the Norm Smith medal a couple of years ago in that 2017 grand final. I think he's put together a fantastic year and he's been a real driving force for the Tigers in their resurgence this year. So I've got one spot left and I'm just trying to remember who it was. I do know who it was. It's a young fella, pretty divisive character as well. Bit of a knobhead if you ask me. Whoops, I've just deleted Bashar. So James Sicily makes my other flank as I re-add Bashar Hooli. James Sicily, yeah, just a fantastic rebounding defender. The player that I wanted to include or would have had next up is Brad Shepard. He is unlucky not to make my list there. So yeah, he didn't make my cut for the 22, but he's had a fantastic year. Jack Crisp is another player I couldn't include, just couldn't fit him in. So we'll move down to the wings now, guys. Okay, so the first option I've got is absolute champion of the game, another young player, Marcus Bontempelli. He, the thing about the Bulldogs midfield, they're all gonna steal votes off each other between Dunkley, McRae and Bont. But I think, honestly, Bont is the best player of those lot. He's just so damaging. He's just a champion leader as well. Um, so he absolutely makes my starting wing position. In the center line, I'm gonna go with a man many people have been talking about all year, and that's Lockie Neal. I think he's a top two. He might have actually been ended up as the top clearance player in the league after his like 14 clearance game against Richmond. But um, yeah, top five in the brown low as far as I'm concerned. And uh, you yeah, know, he's a walk-up start for this team. 
On the other wing, I'm gonna go for a guy whose stats don't necessarily indicate how good he is, but he's one of the best. I thought he finished with the most tackles at the end of the year, but I think Jack Steele might have pipped him. I'm not sure, I haven't looked that up. Somebody can prove me right or wrong in the comments. But Elliot Yo, um, like I said, the stats don't really tell the full story, but he's just such a co uh, contested beast. Um, he's one of the rare attacking players. You can just get him to do a job on a Dusty or a Danger or something like that, and he'll actually get it done. A Fife is another one he matches up well on. And against Richmond, he didn't really get any accolades, but had 15 clearances that game. So big game player and is probably the Eagles' best player, in my opinion. Let's skip ahead down here to the midfield because I want to keep up this midfield theme. And the clear choice for starting Ruckman, in my eyes, is Brody Grundy. Um, he absolutely is a champion of the game already. Surely Collingwood don't offer him just three years. That is ludicrous. But yeah, I don't feel like I really need to sell that too much, that one. Paddy Cripps is... Another walk-up start for this team. Between him and Neil, he was the other top clearance mid in the game. Again, I feel like he kind of speaks for himself. Nat Fife, another one who's going to... I don't think he's going to win the Brownlow. There's been a bit of talk about how he might win the Brownlow. I just don't think he will have enough votes. Probably giving away a bit about my Brownlow count now. Nonetheless, I think between he and Danger, they're probably top two players in the league at the moment. And the other player I think is top three but didn't make this team is Dustin Martin. But um, I digress. So um, just to reflect on that back line, we've got Andrews Grimes Stewart. Sicily McGovern Hooley and then in the center you've got Grundy tapping it down to Cripps and Fife while Bonton Pelly and Yo take up the wings and Lockie Neal is in the midfield so that is an imposing midfield I think they're all taller than 190 they're all between 190 and 194 centimeters other than Lockie Neal who's like 176 or something so that's a big ass midfield all right guys now we'll move on to the forward line as we go along here so this player is the one I'll bring up that I wanted to include, but he's not even in the top 40, and that was Mitch Duncan. I think he's had a really good year as that Whitfield-style um, half-forward, high half-forward. I think he's been really damaging. He's hit the scoreboard, didn't make the team. So I'm going to pick his teammate in Gary Ablett, who I didn't actually have before this, um, and maybe I, maybe I feel a bit bad about that. But uh, in a way, it's good that I can slot him in. I haven't picked Tom Hawkins as one of my key forwards, guys. I've gone the old um, stanky top two in the Coleman as my two key forwards. And I think that's fair enough. I think both of these guys, arguably, probably the best two forwards in the game. Don't think I ended up going with a third tall key forward. Where's Jeremy Cameron? There we go. Guys like Jack Darling and Tom Lynch did make the cut for me. I've gone with Brown and Cameron. Um, they just had fantastic years. And Cameron won the Coleman despite having two less games then Brown, who is second. So impressive from him. Half forward flank. I have gone with the Mickey Walters, probably my favorite Fremantle fan, uh, favorite player. Um, I love how Walters is, he's a goal scoring forward, but he's also high production, absolute superstar of the game. And uh, yeah, absolutely one of Fremantle's best players. So absolutely deserves that spot. Now we've just got the forward pockets. I know that one of them was the best small forward or pure small forward in the game. And that's Charlie Cameron. Um, a little bit different to Walters. Walters really pushes up the ground, is, is another midfielder. But Cameron, as a pure forward, is the best in the game right now. He's taken that mantle from Eddie Betts for sure. And I'm just trying to remember who I had as my next forward. Ah, yeah, I cheated. And I have Paddy Dangerfield playing as the deep forward. Um, and to be fair, he plays deep a lot this year. But I think he's, yeah, just put together one of the... One of his best seasons is just saying something, and I think people are sleeping on him for the Brownlow, to be honest. I think he could go pretty close. He's also my All-Australian captain. Nat Fife will probably be the vice captain while I'm here, um, just because they're both really good leaders and probably the best two players in the competition right now. It's a bit different to when Buddy was offered that legacy captaincy last year. That was a bit weird. I um... Okay, that is our starting team, guys. That forward line of Ablett, Brown, Walters, Dangerfield, Cameron, and Charles Cameron as well. Charles Cameron, I don't know why they wrote that. Now we'll move down to the interchange guys and I've gone pretty um, traditional. I'm going one player from each position. The ruck, as you can imagine, is Max Gorn. Okay, so I'm picking a second ruck. I think Gorn absolutely deserved to be all Australian this year. He is uh, another one of the best um, rucks of his generation. There's a few unlucky names here. I think Tim Kelly is the midfielder on the bench I have. He's really fallen away in the second half of the year. Nonetheless, still one of the most impactful players this season. I've picked him over Adam Trelaw. Adam Trelaw, he ended up with the most disposals. Nonetheless, he just doesn't have that same game-winning impact as any of the guys I listed in that midfield. But I'm sure there'll be people, especially Collingwood fans, who will have something to say about that because he's had a fantastic year. In terms of a forward, I've gone, actually, you know what? I've gone with Dane 
Zorko, the best pressure forward in the league. He can obviously rotate through the midfield as well. He's been a good leader for Brisbane this year and a big part of their resurgence. I feel bad not putting him on the field, but it's hard to get him to displace any of those guys there. So we have one final spot on the list and it is a defensive post. And I am just trying to remember who I had. Aha, how could I forget? It was one of my beloved Eagles, Shannon Hearn. Again, like Kelly, he's kind of fallen away in the second half of the year. Maybe didn't finish it as strongly as he began it. However, another fantastic leader, another one of probably the Eagles' top two or three most important players, really gun intercept player, and almost never misses the target by foot. He's just such a fantastic player. And um, he's unlucky not to be all Australian captain because he's been such a good leader for the Eagles over the stretch. So, there we go, guys. That is the team I've assembled. Now, let's have a quick look at who's missed out. Talia, uh, key back again. I just couldn't squeeze him in into that um, that. You know, there's only three spots for key defenders in the team. Hugh McCluggage, just a bit unlucky there. Some will probably argue he should be in the team over someone like Yo. I disagree personally. Trelaw obviously won a lot of the ball this year, but like I said, his impact probably wasn't quite there. Scott Bendelbury, fantastic season, but again, not quite on the level of these guys. Blitzarves had a great year. Hawkins had a great year. I mean, I'm kind of just listing everyone who had a great year, and that's everyone here. But, you know, guys like Cunnington and Boak as well. Um, just not quite as good as the guys I had in the team. Uh, and Dusty's one I really regret as well because his second half of the season is a huge factor in why Richmond became really good again and are probably going to win the flag now. And I talk about Brad Shepard earlier. So that's it, guys. Thank you for watching yet another True Footy video. Like I said, there's going to be more finals content coming out. So if you're new to the channel, I appreciate you hitting subscribe. And if you're not, Appreciate you staying subscribed and watching the videos. All right, guys, that's just about it for me today. I'll see you guys very soon somewhere on YouTube. Cheers.